I released my first online course a couple weeks ago. And because this was my first time going through the process and using the website, I knew that there was gonna be some little hiccups and bugs that I needed to get sorted out. So I limited the course to 50 sales so I could work out the kinks with those 50 people and make changes to the course based on their feedback. And I'm excited to announce that the course is gonna be relaunching this week with a 30 day money back guarantee. And this time I wanna give the first 100 people to purchase the course three months of free access to my community community because I want to make sure that you have clarity and get the most out of the course. So you can bounce your ideas off of myself and other nerds just like you that are going through my course as well as other instructional material to make sure that your training is going to be as efficient as possible. Now last time when I announced the course was available on my YouTube channel the 50 spots sold out within three hours. So the course is actually going to launch on Sunday February 19th and I'm going to send out an email to all the people on my email list letting you know when it's available which will basically give you first dibs to be be one of those hundred people that get the three month free access. And then a couple days later on Tuesday, February 21st, I'm going to announce it on my YouTube channel and pretty much open the floodgates. So if you're interested in joining the email list and getting first access to the course, be sure to download the free PDF in the description that outlines how I go about watching instructional content and basically the process that I went through to create the course. Now let's dive into the video. Shh. Now, I don't know anything about boxing, but from a basic understanding, there are three or four punches that you use in combination. And the complexity of things comes from the way you combine and set up these punches as opposed to just inventing new punches. And if you're subscribed, you know this is the approach I've been trying to take to this modern style of jujitsu learning, where basically our goal is to find the handful of techniques that are most effective and try and figure out ways to connect them with one another. In my opinion, one of the most important techniques for guard passing is the cross step where you take this foot and you step across to your opponent's hip. And from there, there are a lot of options. You can work your way towards north-south, You can use it to set up a leg drag. Or you can use it to force a chest to chest half guard. So again, the course is designed to pick out the handful of techniques that I think are most effective and figure out ways to combine them together to make you an effective guard passer as fast as possible. And if you can't do any of this fancy footwork because they're grabbing your foot, you can pressure forward, forcing them to let go of your foot and frame you away as you settle into chest to chest half guard. Chest to chest half guard is great, but it can be annoying if our opponent has a butterfly hook. So some of my favorite ways of dealing with this are just to take a grip inside of our opponent's leg and clear that butterfly hook. Or you can take the Craig Jones approach and turk the leg a bit. So they can't put their foot on the ground to really be effective with that butterfly hook at all. And then from there, you can do some fancy foot pummeling to threaten a guard pass. And as they desperately try to recover, you say, cool, you can recover, but you're not getting in that butterfly hook. And I just want to take this time to say that Craig has been doing some pretty innovative stuff in the world of jujitsu. People from the B team are now turking legs and finishing kimuras from half guard. And I got to tell you guys, I'm here for it. Another way to deal with this butterfly hook from chest to chest half guard is to try and step over it. And if you can't quite get over it, it can be a great time to go into this high tripod position and pummel your other foot in between their legs. From here, Ethan does a nice hip switch to complete his guard pass and immediately starts to threaten the mount. Now, these are great ways of dealing with the butterfly hook, but one thing I discuss in the course is the idea of creating upper body and lower body battles. So as our opponent reaches for the leg threatening our lower body, we can take a near side underhook, which gives us the the win at the upper body or as they're using their hand to frame away at our lower body, we say, cool, I'll take the cross face and win at the upper body. Now, a lot of times from butterfly half guard, what they're looking to do is take a scoop grip on our far leg. Shout out Lachlan Giles for talking about some downright sloppy scoop grips from Owen O'Flanagan. So if they have a butterfly hook, we can expect them to reach for that scoop grip on our far leg. And when they do, be ready to punch in that near side underhook. Now this near side underhook is really nice because if someone is posting on our hip and we're trying to do this fancy foot pummel they can give us some problems. So if the hand is on the hip, we see Nicky Ryan relinquishing his cross face and going to that near side underhook, which removes that hand from the hip. If we watch Nicky Rod here, he starts in a T Kimura, hooks the near leg, and comes up to a near side underhook. 
As his partner recovers his knee shield, Nikki stands up and goes into his loose passing and steps into mount, but his partner immediately goes into an escape. Now, Nikki doesn't fight the escape too much and lets his partner recover to the position that he's known for, which is the body lock. And this time, when Nikki gets to mount, his partner is going to be much more tired. Now, most of the time, when people are escaping from mount, they're going to use the classic elbow escape to trap our foot. And from there, they're going to turn back into us and reestablish their frames. Now, if they trap our foot and we're in three-quarter mount, I think an interesting question is which hand do we cross-face with? Now, if they're trapping our left foot, I think it's ideal to cross-face with our left arm. If our foot is trapped on one side and we cross-face with that same side arm, it really torques our opponent's body and makes them uncomfortable. But the downside to this is if they do end up escaping and turn back into us, now now they have an underhook and they're on the attack. So if you do feel like they're going to turn back into you, I think it's really good to cross face with your other arm. So when they do turn back in, they just end up back in chest to chest half guard with their knees facing away from you and they're back in the loop. And when they turn back into you, I think it's important that you stay low chest to chest and don't give them space to reinsert their frames. Now, most of the time from mount, our primary attack is going to be the arm triangle, which means we're going to start by isolating one arm. Now, if we're trying to get an underhook and isolate that arm, but they do a good job of out pummeling us, we can go right into the punch choke, which made Brandon's list as the ninth dirtiest move in jujitsu. And if you're interested in learning this submission from Brandon himself, I think he has some really nice details in his mount dominance instructional. And there's a discount code in the description below if you want to check out his subscription website. But if we are able to isolate our opponent's arm above their head, you can fully expect them to use this cross hip post defense and work to start freeing their arm. Now to deal with this cross hip post, you can transfer to a half Nelson and work to take their back. Or you can put some pressure on their trapped arm and force them to react and turn into a gift wrap type scenario. And from there, if you want to be fancy, you can pin their other wrist to the mat and shoot a triangle. Or you can work to isolate their second arm and have double underhooks. Now, when it comes to actually finishing an arm triangle, a lot of people struggle. And a lot of times it's because your opponent is doing this escape where they're trying to take their shoulder and their hip off the ground. The only defense I've actually seen to high, that actually works for high level Kalagatames is to expose your back by turning away from the Kalagatame and shooting your shoulder forward into the lock and exposing your back, which you see he does here. Now, what's interesting is that when you're in half guard, you can do a good job of keeping their shoulder and their hip on the ground. But as soon as you dismount or pass to go into your finish, your opponent is going to have a much greater ability to take their shoulder and hip off the mat. And you can see Hulk has Giancarlo here in half guard and is doing a good job of pinning him to the mat. And as Hulk goes to complete his pass, Giancarlo puts his hand on his knee, not to fight the pass, but to almost encourage it so he can now take his shoulder and hip off the mat. So in his free YouTube video, Craig teaches to finish the arm triangle from mount or half guard. And we see Gore and Ryan first trying to finish the arm triangle from mount before he's forced to dismount. And again, none of this is new, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Henry Akins, and he was teaching this 10 years ago. If I jump off the mount to go for the head and arm, if I do something like this and jump off the mount, his body is free to move. He can either roll out, shoot up, swing his legs. There's a bunch of things that he can do. So. Anytime I go for the head and arm, um, I prefer to keep them out. And even though this is not a new idea that Craig came up with, I think he has a really good understanding of the position and how to use it in his game. From the single chest wrap, he puts pressure on his opponent's trapped arm to force the gift wrap. And as he holds the wrist with one hand, he feeds his choking arm through. Now his opponent would like to turtle and expose his back, but by staying in half guard, Craig is able to pin that hip to the mat and finish the choke. Again, from the gift wrap, hold the wrist with one hand while you feed your choking arm through. Now, a lot of times your opponent is gonna do this classic defense of answering the phone, but no problem, you can use your support hand to hang up the phone and proceed to finish the choke from mount. Now, I think a really good question to ask is if you're finishing the choke from half guard, can you just set it up from half guard and finish from there? And Craig's answer is if you have a near side underhook and they bridge away, you can use this as an opportunity to feed into the arm triangle. 
but I found when I have a near side underhook and I'm trying to drive their knees to face away from me and they give an explosive bridge in that direction as well, oftentimes this hand that should be going in to choke them is going to be needed as a post out on the mat. So I've found this variation to be difficult to achieve when I'm trying to do it in a live rolling scenario. However, from three quarter mount, it's absolutely gold where most of the time your opponent is gonna be turning on their side to try and trap your foot. And when doing so, you take this opportunity to punch in your arm triangle. And because they trapped your foot, now you're in the perfect situation to finish the choke from half guard. And I think a lot of times we get too caught up in straightening this leg to prevent them from trapping our foot or even dismounting off to that side. When in reality, if they trap our foot, it actually puts us in a stronger finishing position. So I know this video was a bit of a whirlwind. What the Ooh, fuck Jesus. is happening right now? To sum up, I really like the cross step to force chest to chest half guard. But if your partner finds a way to sneak in their butterfly hook, we're gonna need a way to clear it. Once we're in chest to chest half guard, I really like using a near side underhook and working towards mount. And as you're working towards mount with the near side underhook, you could have the opportunity to shoot in an arm triangle and finish from half guard. But nowadays, my favorite favorite time to go for the arm triangle is from three quarter mount when they're trying to trap my foot. Because if we're able to get our grips at the upper body when they trap our foot, it's going to lead to a very strong finish. And if you're interested in purchasing the course where I give you a clear guide on what I believe to be the most effective techniques at passing the guard, be sure to show your interest and get on the email list by downloading the free PDF down below, which outlines my process for watching instructionals and what I did to create the course. So you can give yourself the best chance at being one of those hundred people that get the first three months of the community for free. And I'll see you next week.